Well, we're back for another one. Um, when the name Bruno Mattei gets mentioned, a lot of people cringe because a lot of people consider Bruno Mattei a hack director. Well, considering what he was given to work with, Rats, A Night of Terror, Hell of the Living Dead, you know, and some other ones, which he used the, uh, you know, the pseudonym Vincent Dawn, a lot of people just really felt that he was a hack director, and pretty much so did I. But I had a conversation when I had my radio show with Greta Goretta, who had been directed by Bruno, and she said that she felt he was a competent director, but, you know, when, you, when you're given shit to work with, it's kind of hard to make it, you know, exciting, for lack of better words. Plus, with the low-budget constraints that he had, you know, you know, his stuff is maligned for a lot of reasons. But now I came across something that is extremely hard to find that he wrote and co-directed with Claudio Fagrasso. And it's a spaghetti western that came out in 1987, and it wasn't one of those comedy theme type ones like we're all coming out toward the end of the cycle. This was a dead serious film called Scalps. Now, they're using the old Civil War motif of this crazy colonel that's still fighting the Civil War and is going to trade with the Indians, but he wants Yaman, uh, the chief's daughter, because he's a sexual sadist and he keeps a Mexican girl prisoner that he rapes before he gets the urge. So, he sends his soldiers out to make a trade with the chief, you know, guns that don't fire and whiskey will make them blind. Well, when they tell the chief that basically the colonel wants to buy his daughter, the chief takes umbrage to that and refuses the whole thing. So a big argument breaks out and the chief gets shot. Now the troops go fucking crazy massacring all the Indians. Yaman herself basically is no shrinking violet, and she's a very hot-looking lady, and she takes out four of the soldiers with a knife, but gets her eye busted, busted open by a rifle butt. Now, probably the inspiration for this scene was Soldier Blue, because they're chopping off heads, they're killing children, they're raping women, they're just cutting down people in general. So now, they're going to bring Yaman back to be the colonel's sex slave. And there's a bunch of shit going on there, but... She's crafty and she gets loose. Now, she takes off through the desert and she winds up at a ranch with her hands still tied behind her back. Uh, the rancher is a guy named Matt whose wife was killed by Indians, so he has basically no sympathy. So he basically just takes her in, in a barn, throws her in a pile of straw, and puts a blanket over her and says, fuck it. Well, the colonel is not to be outdone and he hires this tracker called Hondo the Halfbreed, who can find anyone. So, Matt has a twinge of conscience because that fucking eye wound is getting infected, so he basically takes her in the house almost tenderly, puts her in a bed, and dresses the wound and takes care of that. Well, in the middle of the night, she gets up, she starts walking around, and she finds a closet, and in that closet is a uniform, the same uniform that the colonel's men are wearing. So she gets a knife and tried to stab Matt. Of course, Matt is not thrilled by this whole thing as he figured it was coming and basically chains her with a collar around her neck to the bed. So the next day, they sort of explain the situations, like how his wife was murdered by the Indians and how her whole tribe was wiped out by the colonel's people. So now she sees the two men coming toward the ranch. Matt tells her to hide in the stable. So it's the sergeant, played by Spaghetti Western regular Charlie Bravo and Hondo the Halfbreed. Well, Matt's not too happy about this, and uh, the sergeant says, you should never quit, you should have stayed with us, bup -a -da -bup -a -da -bup. Now Hondo's going to go check out the stable. Matt tells him no, he goes for his gun, Matt blows him away. Matt almost blows the sergeant away, but the sergeant swears that that was the dumbest thing you could have ever done, because now you're a fucking walking dead man, and for whatever reason, Matt lets him ride off. So, now he's in a quandary. He can't stay there because the colonel's men are going to come, and um, they have to take off. So he fills a bag with supplies, including several sticks of dynamite. Well, Yaman is no shrinking violet, and she's being watched. The place is being watched by three soldiers, and one of them was the one who smacked her in the eye, and he sort of sneaks around, and she sneaks up on him, stabs him in the gut, and scalps him. 
Well, he sort of lived through that, and a bloody figure tries to grab her and Matt as they try to take off, but the bloody figure winds up flying off a cliff. The other two soldiers don't fare too well because Yaman cuts their throat. She's no shrinking violent, and Matt's kind of horrified about what she's doing. So anyway, the whole troops are after her, and um, Matt and her ambush a bunch of them using... Um, arrows and arrows uh, with dynamite attached to them, which does pretty much a pretty nasty thing. In the meantime, an Indian couple is struggling to get across the desert, and the colonel's men catch them, and the colonel scalps them. Um, there's some kind of ambush, and they get separated, but they catch Matt, and the colonel is not happy with Matt and decides to give him the man called horse treatment with the fucking hooks through the chest muscles, and he's pulled behind two horses because they're going back to uh, his uh, little fort, and they're going to execute Matt. Well, in the meantime, Yaman is taking out as many soldiers as she can. She sets one of those traps with the fucking spikes in them, two of them chase her, she slows down, they fall in the thing, they're impaled. Uh, the sergeant sees her, is wounded, um, he tries to take off, but she shoots an arrow with a dynamite stick that hits him right in the chest and blows him to fucking bits. Now they got Matt back at the uh, fort, and they're ready him for execution, when the colonel's wife, who knows what a scumbag he is, walks up to Matt and lets him see that she has a gun stuck under her arm. She brushes up against him, he gets the gun, he manages to blow away everybody but the colonel, and the colonel shoots his own wife in the head. Now Yaman shows up, shoots two fucking arrows into the colonel, and yells to Matt, Now finish it. Now here's where it gets a little bit fucked up. The dying colonel admits that he was the one who killed Matt's wife because he hated the fact that she married Matt and wanted to make it look like the Indians. So basically this bastard killed and scalped his own daughter. Well, the film ends with Matt reaching down, grabbing him by the top knot, and ah, scalping him. Now, as anybody who knows me knows, I'm a, I'm a big fan of spaghetti westerns, and this is actually very well done for the time period it was shot in, because like I said, by 87, most of these things had run its course. Um, I don't think this thing ever got theatrical in the United States. About this time, just about any import film being brought in, uh, like I said, this was 87, would be going directly to video. Um, this went to an obscure video company called Imperial Video. Now, it is yet to see a DVD release, or any kind of release, on, on a disc. I'm sort of hoping that uh, Wild East might find, you know, a good print of this and actually put it out, because it's a good film. I mean, you know, aside from the exploitative, uh, exploit, exploitativeness of the whole thing, it does address, you know, the question of race relations back then and how people stirred shit up and got people to hate the Indians and, you know, abuse the Indians and things like that. But, you know, you know, I just think it's probably maybe the best thing he ever did, not that I've seen all Bruno's work, but it sort of elevates him out of that, you know, hack, hack, um, you know, uh, thing. Uh, like I said, I, I really enjoyed the film. It's just a shame that um, nobody's released it. Um, but hey, what the hell, if you really want a burn copy, and it's good, you can contact me at grindhousepurgatory at uh, gmail.com, and I ain't going to charge you a hell of a lot. What I got is a really, you know, good burn of it. I don't know where they got the, the source material, but it's okay, and like I said, it's worth a look. And it'll probably make you uh, look at Bruno Mattei in a whole different light, too, so, uh, that's our episode for today. Again, stay safe, mask up. Uh, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for tuning in. And we'll catch you on the flip side. This is 42nd Street Pete saying stay safe.